few seconds. All right, I think we are live. Yes, so hi again, everyone. I have the pleasure to welcome John Weigley in person to this Emacs Conf. Hi, John. Hello there. How are you doing, Leo? I am doing fantastic, and even more now that I am in a room with you, uh, because we've been we were we were reminiscing with Sasha. So you had been there in person in 2013, right. and since we started doing those online one since 2019, I think you've always been online, right? Mm -hmm. Usually I mean, it's a pre-recorded video. I think this will be the first one I do live in a long time. You're right. I'm saying we are online right now, but I just meant pre-recorded video. So it's good to have you uh, almost in person or at least live. And we are excited to hear about some of the Emacs news. So the, the floor is yours. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the yearly state of the Emacs union, I guess, uh, about how Emacs development is going. Just to note, I am not currently a maintainer of Emacs. So what I do for to get these notes is I call up my friend Eli Zaretsky, one of the current Emacs maintainers, and he and I sit down for an hour and he just gives me his, his, his dump of what's been going on. So I'm sort of just the uh, messenger here. But thanks to Ellie for these notes and all of the efforts that he uh, contributes. So what he's been telling me is that um, this Emacs 29 release that we had recently looks to have been very, very successful, which is some good news because there were a lot of new features and some of those features were actually quite radical. So, so far it's been quite a success, no serious problems with it. And we have Emacs 29.2 will be released very soon. They are thinking now about starting the Emacs 30 release cycle soon after 29.2 is released, where the release branch, which is called Emacs-30 usually, will become will be cut and then development will become frozen with only bug fixes going into that branch. That may take quite some time until it actually comes to fruition as a release, but at least it means that the release is going to start taking shape in that branch soon. So for now, Emacs 30 looks like maybe it's going to be a little less interesting than Emacs 29 was, um, meaning not a huge number of changing features. But there are still some new things going in. So one of them is that uh, Emacs 30 is going to have Android support. So you will be able to run Emacs 30 on your Android devices. So if you've ever wanted to have native Emacs on a tablet, which I know I've always wanted, <laughs> uh, that would be will become possible with Emacs 30. There's also going to be much better support for touchscreen devices, uh, coincidentally, both laptops and tablets. So that'll enhance that Android support. Um, some, there will be some recently gained support for LLDB in GUD.EL. So if you're on a Mac OS machine and you use, a, or, or a machine that uses just LLVM as part of the compilation process, then you probably are familiar with LLDB as the command line debugger. And that support for using LLDB through GUD will become uh, possible in Emacs 30. I'm looking forward to this actually quite a bit as well. Uh, seat Perl mode is being deprecated, and all future work now is only being put towards C Perl mode. <clears throat> Another one is that there are going to be some new major modes based on tree sitter. Uh, they will be for the languages Lua, Elixir, and HTML. And if you're not familiar, I think. Tree Sitter was introduced in Emacs 29. It's a, a library that allows you to specify the grammar of a programming language as a BNF file, and uh, I think it, using JavaScript. And then with that file uh, as input to Emacs, it is then able to do uh, syntax highlighting, uh, syntax discovery, all of those things within Emacs without having to use Elisp and regex to discover the structure of the language. It defers the structure gathering to tree sitter and then uses that information to navigate the language. So uh, as time goes on, you'll see more and more languages taking on tree sitter support. So the next three coming up, Lua, Elixir, and HTML. And then the last feature for Emacs 30 is that the byte compiler will now detect and warn about many more questionable constructs, things like empty macro bodies, missing lexical constructs or say condition case without any handlers, just silly stuff that uh, might litter the code, but now you'll get a warning about it from the byte compiler to help you clean up the code and get rid of those potential sites of error. Um, so this is the main thing uh, that will be worked on for Emacs 30 and what's looked like shaping up for the release. And also he wanted me to announce that Stefan Kangas is now a new co-maintainer 
and Stefan is, I believe, here with us in the conference, and he'll be able, I hope, to help me answer any questions about future Emacs development, because I'm not in the heat of it and don't have all those answers at the moment. Um, so that is all there is as far as a development update for now, and I am available to take any questions. All right. Thank you so much, Sean, for being the uh, messenger of all this good news. I mean, you did start by saying this would not be as exciting, perhaps, as prior releases of Emacs, but uh, you then proceeded to say a lot of stuff that it felt very exciting to me. So <laughs> good, good. Glad to hear that. Right. Uh, so we do have uh, questions coming in already. And uh, again, people, the link is on IRC and also on the talks page if you want to start asking your questions. Uh, so John, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you the questions and then you can answer them. Uh, is that okay with you? Absolutely. Splendid. So starting with the first question, which changes in recent Emacs releases are you enjoying using? I have really liked the visual line mode. Um, I'm not sure how recent that is. Some of these features I only discover quite late. The new display line number functionality where it's much, much, much faster. And of course, native compilation. Native compilation has been quite brilliant for some of the larger packages that I use. I do a lot of stuff in Emacs. I use GNUs, I use eShell, I use org mode quite a lot. So native compilation has brought the user experience much closer to a modern app than uh, some of the lagging and slowness that I might have experienced in the past. Definitely. Uh, moving on to the next question. What do you think the future in the area of artificial intelligence from the developer point of view? Could you say that one more time? Your voice broke up a little bit. Oh, sorry. What do you think the future in the area of artificial intelligence from the developer point of view? It's also a shaky question, I think, <laughs> but you get the point. I do use chat GPT shell inside of Emacs quite a bit actually when doing development in other languages. Just the other day, I was working on my ledger accounting program and I haven't done a lot of C++ in recent years. So I had forgotten how to exactly compare two strings only up to the length of the shortest string. I know I could have cranked that out just writing it C style, but I didn't remember what the current state of the art is for C++ and the STL. So I just asked ChatGPT. I asked the exact question that I just said to you. And sure enough, it popped out the one-liner that was exactly what I needed. So I think in terms of developer assistance, not having to keep all of standard libraries or common idioms in memory. I don't know if other people are familiar with Rosetta Stone projects. They're projects where you have, say, 100 different languages, and there's a particular question, say, how do I read a file and copy it to another location, and then it has an instance of doing that activity for every one of those languages. That's a great database, and I've used them quite a bit in the past for remembering how to do certain things, say, copying a, converting a string to UTF-8. I think that AI does a great job of completely replacing the need for databases like that, because you can just ask, how do I copy a, convert a string to UTF-8? Yeah, exactly. And, um, and, you know, especially with languages which are tried well tried you know it's very easy to get an answer that is correct but sometimes the, the, what i find bothersome with this type of uh uh coding i think it's a, a ai aided coding but it's still coding is that especially with c languages sometimes you're going to end up with undefined behaviors and stuff like this just because other people have been doing it right. or because the algorithm or the model was trained with data that dates back to 10 years ago sure. and at the time c was not perhaps uh well you know C++ was a little different. Anyway, uh, I'm not here to talk. You are here to talk. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the next question. P people already get to hear my voice plenty, and whereas yours, uh, much sparser. All right. So what is the future of Emacs on macOS? I understand that there are too few developers for the platform. Is that still true? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know what the current statistics are. I've been a user of Emacs on macOS for decades now, it feels like. The, uh, there's also that Mac port version of Emacs, which builds Emacs more directly using the GUI libraries on the platform. That continues to be updated with every single new release that comes out. So I'd say that the support may not be as great as it is on Linux and other platforms, but to this day, I haven't suffered from being a Mac user. Right. The only thing I remember about uh, Emacs on Mac OS was that 
emojis made it inside the GUI first before they did it, <laughs> did it anywhere else. That's the the one anecdote that I have on macOS. Right. And historically, that um, feature was removed in order to prevent Mac from having features that Linux did not. I didn't want to go into that point. I just wanted to mention the beginning of the anecdote, and people can find it out. But yes, that's also what it led to. Um, moving on to the next question. Why aren't you contributing to Emacs anymore? Lack of time, I guess? Lack of time, primarily. Work has been very consuming. There are a lot of other projects and things that I like doing. I still find Emacs list very, very fun to write. Uh, just the other day, I was hacking up some extension macros for myself for org mode. But to have the time needed to sit down and design a whole new mode and work on it, I've been spending a lot of my time now in functional languages, especially theorem provers. I just find that so intellectually satisfying and interesting. Plus, it pays a lot better. Never had a paying job as an Emacs Lisp developer. So when it comes to now just being a fun language or a hobby language, it is relegated to the time that I have free when it's available. Right. Well, the good thing is that it's uh, kind of like riding bicycle, you know, writing a major mode, it comes back relatively quickly and it's still sure. as enjoyable. You know, the other day, actually, I took notes on a mode that I wanted to write. Uh, there's an app I use on the Mac called Drafts, and I really love it. I use it all the time. I wanted to mimic the interface of this app in Emacs, so I could use Emacs as my Drafts application rather than this separate one. So I noted down all the different user parameters and how it should function and everything to describe the app to myself as sort of uh, notes to get me started on that work when I did have free time to work on it. Somebody out there on the internet just saw these notes because I keep a lot of my stuff on GitHub. They fed it to chat GPT, going back to your AI question, and they actually sent back to me a mode that implemented everything that I had said, which was effectively chat GPT seeing that what I had described was clear enough for it to derive most of the code that I would have wanted to write. So maybe, maybe another thing that AI can do is it can increase the value, uh, the efficiency of my free time. Exactly. I think that's a wonderful point. And phrasing it as efficiency of free time is great because you still have the expertise, obviously, that you're mobilizing into the design that you're formulating to ChatGPT. But then this expertise is turned into something that actually works. It's uh, uh, perhaps we're all going to become software architect at some point. And then mm -hmm. the uh, busy work of actually coding the library and the software will be relegated to AI. That's an interesting future where we still, however, need to acquire the skills to know what is good code, I suppose. But that's an interesting future to think of. Uh, a very long question. So one of the tricky things about running Emacs on Android is do you use anything that requires extra packages, example like PDF tools with new PDF, or going with a database, playing music or video with MPD or MPV and Bonga Elfeed? Do you run Emacs Termux, Emacs APK, Emacs in Virtual Machine? This is also the case on Emacs for Windows to a lesser degree. So summarizing, how do you make Emacs work on Android if you do not have the synergy of stuff that you usually find on Linux systems like MPV and all the fancy applications like this? It's a good question. Since I, I'm not an Android user and I have never tried running on Emacs on Android platforms, I'm not sure what's available out there to plug Emacs into. I mean, effectively, that question comes down to external dependencies and system support. That would be a great question for Stefan or somebody who has tried using Emacs, uh, the development version of Emacs on Android. Great. We'll put a pin in this for Stefan afterwards. Great. So moving on to the next question. Will OrgTech someday become the default tech mode in Emacs? And if so, when? Will Org what become? OrgTech, you know, the uh, LaTeX mode. I do not know. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's been a while since I've done LaTeX. It must, must have been like four years, but it, it was a pretty uh, the major mode for editing documents, like the state of the art for editing LaTeX documents in Emacs. And apparently, right. it's not default. I assume there's LaTeX mode or something that is doing it. So, were you saying OCTEC, like A U C Tech? Oh, did I not pronounce the C? OCTEC. Oh, yes. I thought, you said org, I thought you said Org Tech. I wasn't familiar with that. OCTEC yeah, is what OCTEC. I. Is the only one I've ever used. I know there is a built-in LaTeX mode, but 
I've never used it. I, I always just download whatever the latest version of Octech is and use that. I don't know why it's not uh, a standard package. Becoming a standard package has its own costs for the development cycle because it slows down release cycle quite a bit. It's now you have to create PRs that are reviewed by the Emacs Devel mailing list. It is a little more inertia. Of course, it gets you more, more distribution because it's a default package now and everybody can be using that. But it's not something every, every developer decides to do. It took a few years, in fact, to get use package into Emacs core. And that only happened after it was so stable that it really wasn't receiving many changes anymore. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a thing when you move into core, you lose a lot of your agility in terms of the, how you're writing the code or how you expand code. And that's why you have this vibrant community on Melpa compared to <clears throat> core, but you know, it doesn't necessarily ought to be this way. It could be a little different, you know? And it, it feels like there's this repetition between, repartition, sorry, between people developing for the core of Emacs and people developing on Melpa. But at the end of the day, those two groups are constantly talking to one another and taking cues from one another as well. So that's great. And there's, of uh, course, the Melpa repository may I, too. may I jump in there about this particular question? Because sure. I think, I mean, you know, org mode doesn't really have any problems with releases. Correct. Just because it's distributed with Emacs. So there is a difference between being in the core proper and being distributed with Emacs. And for something like use package, it's really necessary to be in the core. But for something like major mode, it's a bit, a bit easier. That's a very, very good point. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that distinction. Org mode does advance pretty rapidly, and then it makes releases into the core distribution. Uh, Jan, you, I believe you also wanted to say something before uh, someone start, jumped in with a question. Do you happen to remember? Mm -mm. Okay, that's fine. I lost to, uh, lost to their time. Uh, I'll be moving on to the next question then. Uh, and by the way, feel free to interrupt us. You know, uh, the, the whole point of this discussion is for you to ask questions to John Wigley. So whether it be via the Etherpad or via BBB, you know, choose your choose your weapon. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question in the meantime. And we have about seven minutes left of Q&A, and then we'll be moving on to Stefan. So do you use other IDEs for theorem proving work, notably VS Code for Lean? Which languages and provers can, do you, uh, can or do you use Emacs for? I've only used Emacs. I, I've used Emacs for working with ACL2, Coq, Agda, and Lean. And I really love Proof General. Coq is my favorite language to be working in. Agda has really great support as well, has a very nice Emacs mode. I'm only just now starting to get into Lean 4. So I have everything installed, but I haven't really started coding in earnest. I'm still reading a lot of the tutorials and learning a bit about the language. There was a while there where I used a IDE for ACL2 that was outside of Emacs, only because it was the same IDE all my coworkers were using and it was easier to share tips and tricks with them. But um, yeah, no, I, I found Emacs to be a great home for doing theorem proving. Right. Uh, next question. Can we see that AI generated draft like, uh, sorry, you know what we mentioned, what you mentioned before about the draft uh, that you then fed into ChatGPT. Do you happen to have this draft anywhere? Uh, let me see if it's still, let me see if it's still on GitHub. It just take me one second to take a look here. Take your time. The problem is I don't quite remember where I made the note. But no, I don't. I don't see it on GitHub, so I don't have it readily at hand. Well, that's fine. Uh, we'll be able to. Well, if you happen to find it, you know, we'll make sure to add it on the pad and then on the talks page. And I, I think we would we would all be interested to see what this design document that actually made something uh, <laughs> work afterwards in ChatGPT with Elis. I'm very interested to see what it would do because I tend to be very interested about this type of stuff I had generated, but I never thought about doing it with Elisp because somehow it feels like two different worlds. Like Lisp is kind of from the past. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love it and I use it every day, but it's two different parts of my brain that I didn't think about linking. So I'd be very excited to see this as well. Um, moving oh. on to the next question. Oh, go on, please. 
I did find it. I'm going to have to give it to you as a uh, as a link here. Sure, you can do it on Big Blue Button, and I'll put it on the uh, on the pad. I put it into the public check. chat for BB. Yes. So if everyone isn't anyone is interested, I'm putting it right in the answer to the question right here on my screen. So feel free to click on it and explore it. I'm kind of curious. So I'm gonna can I click it on stream and can we look at it a little bit together? Sure, sure. I haven't tried running it. I can't say for its fit say say yet for its fitness, but it's definitely enough of the groundwork done that it's absolutely a, an assistance. Right. Okay. So it's loading up right now. You can see my webcam, right? I can see your browser attempting to load. There we go. OK, cool. So I'm not sure what uh, GitHub is doing. Let me give it a little more room. The reactive uh, setup is not working too well. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're viewing oh, it's it. If, yeah. I see. Can I see the file, then? I should be able to see the file. Uh, I think he just mentions the code in that comment. So if there's a way to view only the comment, it would make it clear. Right. OK, I'm loading the file separately. I'm checking the time. We have three minutes left. And I think the other question, in the meantime, whilst I, sh I show this, I'm going to launch another question, uh, which was about draft. Uh, people are hearing you talking about draft, but does that mean you're not using org anymore? Oh, no, I, I use org all the time. In fact, the way that I've configured drafts is that after I type the thing in the note into drafts, I hit a key and it creates an org mode capture item for it. The reason why I use drafts instead of Emacs is because it's always available. If Emacs is currently doing some job for me, say I'm running some long running subshell and it's the UI is frozen up, whatnot. Drafts is always 100% of the time instantly available. So that's why I tend to then lean on it a bit. But all of the destination of that data is still org mode. And everything that I do gets tracked through org mode. That's also why I wanted to implement the UI scheme of drafts in Emacs so that I could drop the use of this external application. And then, I mean, I would still have the problem of sometimes Emacs being unavailable, but uh, I would, I would, I would pay that price in order to have that good UI of drafts inside Emacs. Great. Uh, I think we have. Uh, mm, we might be too tight on time. We only have about two minutes, and I need to jump room to go into Stefan's room as well. So, All right. John, where I get to thank you so much for taking thank the time you, to not only. Well, thank you, you. Uh, taking the time to answer all questions, but also doing a little bit of a reporting on the state of Emacs. And now we'll get to continue, continue this with Stefan. So do you have any last words for everyone, John? No, no. I look forward to hearing Stefan speak. OK, great. And we'll look forward potentially to having you again next year, uh, potentially still doing news like this.